I remember one time, a couple of years ago, I have a dream. There was a moonlight, really big moon. And then I thought I went outside and looked up in the sky and I could see all the stars. And I saw that two black spots by the moon and all of a sudden cartoons, characters appeared on the moon and I was astonished and I didn't know what it was. And then I asked somebody, what's happening to the moon? And someone said, it's probably some crazy white man. They came up with something to show on the moon. Our land was um, north of 60, part of the Nunavut too. But for, for reasons to our, our ancestors, they have to settle around here, where they started gathering together. people who settled here and um, I think they wanted to settle on Moose Island that's where they have that first store and uh, the commercial fishing it's the middle of the lake and People are thinking ahead and they said if we settle here if the ice is not frozen fast there's no way we can cross the lake so they settle on the mainland for that purpose
We usually leave in the fall around end of September, first week in November, first week in October. And we stay out in the camp, like far away from the community. And we return just before Christmas. I grew up in the bush with my, my parents till I was 10, with my grandparents too. I live on caribou meat and I, I don't know how, how I would survive without it. This picture was taken just a few weeks before my father passed away and they were dressed in the buckskin jacket because it was treaty day at that time. And these are my parents. And myself. Good morning. You got you got this as my children. Okay. When I went to residential school, I couldn't speak any English. I don't even know yes or no. Um, I just went there when I was five. In that residential school, we were told not to speak our language. And they said it's a bad language and it's dirty and things like that. After that, I didn't want to go back. So my dad said, no, if you don't want to go back, then you don't have to. It took me a long time before I can speak in front of a white person. Even if somebody talks to me in Dene, of a white person I would never answer back. My other grandmother picked out somebody when I was a teenager. Said, you're gonna marry that person. I didn't even like that person, you know. When I told my other grandmother, they said, no, you don't have to marry anybody you don't want to. And he said, that's your decision. As long as you don't have a child before you get married, that's important, she said. And it's up to you who you want to marry. He was a good hunter. 
I married him because I know I'll never go grow hungry. <laughs> Caribou is the main source for us in our northern Saskatchewan here. We got a right to shoot them, but all the Indian or First Nation, they got a right to shoot anywhere in Canada, but uh, the government told us to not to sell them. In the old days, uh, when our grandfather signed a treaty with the white man, he said, as long as the sun and the rock and the river flows, it will not bother us. But the government is trying to change the rule now on us these days towards our hunting rights. I have eight kids. The first, um, Hector, Hannah, Angus, and Rita, they came every year. And then five years later, Ernie came along. And then four years later, Rocky. And then Anna and Joey. Angus, Ernie, and um, Hannah are all living together in one big house. I want them to be by themselves and be responsible for their own actions. When I think about the young people in the community, of all they've lost and all the easy things that they would be, that's happening right now. And as long as there is a handout from the government for the young people, like um, they get free money, so that's the main problem. They want to just stay away from all the politics and what's going on. There are some that wants to speak out, but they're afraid of being ridiculed and be um, at outcasts with their groups.
one time there was a, a mining company that came here and I was just a child then and I went to a meeting with my mother. They were told that there's uranium in the water and they were going to drain the water and get their uranium out. I recalled one of the elders saying to them, it's in the water and it's not hurting anybody. If, if it was hurting people, we wouldn't be here today, he said. But once you start tampering with nature to get those things out, then it's dangerous. I hunt too, with him of course, not by myself, but if I'm out in, in my camp and if there's a lot of um, spruce grouse and if I need them, like I shoot them and you know, provide food for us. There used to be a lot of um, just small animals around, but now you can't really find anything. It's probably about the noise and the, the environment. There was one guy that was working for the mines and he was telling people that it's good. The uranium mine is used for medicine, it'll create jobs and things like that. I think it was in, in 84 or around 84 or 85, um, there was a lady named um, Diana Lees. She was an adult education instructor. A 
I got married when I was in grade grade eight, and I wanted to upgrade myself, so I went there. And she started telling me about uranium mine because it's just across the lake. So I wanted to find out more, so she was helping me and getting materials and talking to different people from down south. So since then, I wanted to find out more. And then I knew that it's dangerous. We say there shouldn't be any border line, but the government put a line there. And they put a big mines around there. But those people, some still live, but they get nothing out of it. They say there's going to be jobs for people, but there's not hardly any jobs and people left with nothing. We had a blockade because there was no communication between the uranium mining companies and the people here. It's so sad to say that if you mean so well to help change the community, your people does, don't accept you like um, who are you to be making changes and who made you the big boss or something like that. For me, the Dene don't know what the real religion is, like um, the spiritual part. I have a strong feeling that it has to do with um, the drumming and the caribou because if I see a, a live caribou, it's, um, it's, it does something to me that I can feel there's something there. I 
and so is the drumming. If I hear our own drums beating, then you feel I feel something too. It's not only me, but a lot of people that I talked to said the same thing. I'm not sorry that I'm Catholic because my grandparents and my parents are Catholic. But I don't know if my, my great-great-grandfather was a Catholic. I can't say I'm religious, but I pray. Praying is not saying just saying words and things. Praying is what you do to help your other people. I started doing beat work when I was about four. And by the time I was six, I knew how to do Beat work on a beating loom like my son was doing. And when I was about 10, that's when I started doing good beat work and I was helping my mother with moccasins. Mm. I share a lot of information with my sister. One time I was doing, um, I was teaching a class of um, young girls and boys how to do beat work. And my daughter was in the class. And um, she was doing beat work and she wasn't doing it right. I take it apart. I did that to a couple of students just once. But her, she had to take them apart more than three times. One black, one red, black, red, and black. One black. Mm. Oh, 
And finally, she was kind of like in tears and said, Mom, why are you doing this to me, just me? Like, these kids are not doing perfect beating, but you let them alone. And I have to take her aside and tell her, you're my daughter, and I expect you to do perfect work. Mm -mm. I said black, red, black, red, black. Del Zeno, del Coso, del Zeno, del Coso, del Zeno. Del Zeno. Del Coso. Hey. Hey. You're in two of us, girls. Oh, look. Del Zeno. Del Zeno. Del Coso. I was really active in um in anti uranium. But um, you know you can talk and talk till you're blue in the face, but nobody will listen to you. The ones that have the power are the people with the money, and they don't care about whose lives are in danger. They just leave their waste behind. In my grandmother's days, they struggled to survive, but they were happy. If you're out in the bush, like you have no use for money, and all you need is just know how to survive. The first time I went commercial fishing with my daddy was little. It was as small as about seven or eight. Yeah, fish pen is, is about use more than 20, 20 nets. Then we can get license go commercial fishing.
Well, of course, the fish is starting to, um, it's not disappearing, but it's getting less. And if you looked at the, the community, it's surrounded by water and our lives depend on the water. This is a big lake and it'll take a long time, but um, slowly I'm sure something is going into the water or into the air because of all the mining activity that's just happening across. water is destroyed or I'm sure it will be someday and what are our kids gonna do are the governments gonna relocate them Nice fish, but I would say we still maintain our culture. Um, I'm going to a um, education meeting. I've been on the board for four years, and so we really talked about what should be taught in our school. 
And um, last year, we started um, having Dene language taught in school. When the elders die, they die with their knowledge and their stories. So one of the things I really want to do in the near future is um, work on the stories, interview elders. Twenty-five years ago, if someone asked me to speak out in the community, I, would, I don't think I would have. But since I can see my children growing, and if I don't speak for them, who's going to do it? hopes for Anna and Joey that they finish their school and I don't want them to stay in the community but I want them to go further like go down south go to university take what they they want to be and come back to the community to help the people I'm going to Prince Albert for a meeting and I have to leave these meetings are not planned when you're called you just have to go so this is what we're doing. We'll be back tomorrow night. It's so sad to see, if, even if you're so against it. The government don't listen to you. All they looked at is on money. They're down south, they're thousands of miles away and what can hurt them. But this is where we're, we at, where we're born and where we'll die. We're not going anywhere. 